Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video. So it's no secret that topical antiandrogens have had a mixed success rate. Even when we look at RU58841, also known as PSK3841, we can see that the initial phase one and two human clinical trials gave indications that the drug itself works when it comes to improving hair counts and is somewhat tolerable. We at least see the mentionings of which on Prostracin's archived website. I should remind you all in the audience that Prostracin, a now incorporated United Kingdom based pharmaceutical company, which actually used to be two separate pharmaceutical companies called Proskilia and Strachan, obtained the rights to RU58841 after a series of pharmaceutical company mergers and acquisitions. Finally, Prostracin was acquired by Kiowa Hako Kirin, a Japanese pharmaceutical company. Anyway, with that lore out of the way, let's have a look at that Prostracin website on archive.org where they mention RU58841. So archive.org allows us to see the old catched web pages of a particular website. So if you were to go to prostracin.com, it'll just redirect you to Kiowa Hako Kirin's website. But with this particular tool, we're allowed to look around and see what was going on in the early to mid 2000s. So under their research and development page, Prostracin mentions about RU58841, which mind you is called PSK3841, they're the same molecule. They mentioned that, this is an innovative molecule with a unique mechanism of action for the treatment of androgen dependent conditions, such as androgenetic alopecia and acne. In preclinical studies, it has shown promising activity in various models of acne, alopecia, and hirsutism. The product, PSK3841, also known as RU58841, has good systemic and dermal tolerance. In human clinical pharmacology, there was no systemic anti-androgenic activity and again good general and dermal tolerance. The molecule has completed several Phase I studies and a proof-of-concept Phase II study for alopecia. It has demonstrated similar efficacy after six months treatment, as that observed with current oral therapy for alopecia after 12 months, based on the increase in net hair count. Again, no systemic anti-androgenic effect was observed, and 90. This product is available for licensing. In addition to these details about the Phase 1 and Phase 2 human clinical trials, there are multiple studies on RU5841 and also anecdotes online that shows improvements in treating androgenetic alopecia. One particular animal model that I found interesting was the test of RU5841 on stump-tailed macaca monkeys. And these monkeys are our closest evolutionary animal relative that can experience androgenetic alopecia. So they're hominids, we're hominids, and it serves as a very comparable animal study that can show us what will happen if we block androgen receptors in the scalp and how that is able to combat androgenetic alopecia. So in that particular study, improvements were made in the target area hair count for those stump-tailed balding macaca monkeys. So that's just an additional bit of evidence of RU58841 working. So we have some details, some loose details about it working in humans, phase one, phase two, and also it working in stump-tailed rhesus macaca monkeys, our closest animal relative that can experience androgenetic alopecia. Okay, so this is cool and all, but this begs the question, why isn't RU58841 on the market right now? After all, it's been around for nearly two decades on the gray market, but if it was successful in phase one and phase two human clinical trials, then why didn't we get a phase three human clinical trial? Why aren't we getting RU58841 gel to treat our acne and or androgenetic alopecia from our dermatologists. Why doesn't RU58841 have some sort of fancy drug brand name like Finasteride does with Propecia or Dutasteride does with Avidart? Come to think of it, let's think of a uh, cool name for RU58841. I'm thinking Vitressa. So I'm having a bit of fun here. Vitressa because the V-I-T vit can be thought of like life or vitality from Latin vita. Res, R-E-S-S. So tress, and like we know tressless, the word tress means a lock of hair. So yeah, that's just me fooling around. But anyway, let's get back to the topic here. It's important for us to ask the question, why didn't RU58841 come to market? That is the essential question here, because it's very hard to find any sort of public details on the human clinical trials. Like, 
We can't find the papers. Believe me, I tried to find the papers. I literally drove to Kiowa Hako Kirin's pharmaceutical base here in New Jersey, and I sent a bunch of emails, and they pretty much gave me vague responses. Nothing of substantial detail here. But I think I have some details for you guys. In a previous video, I investigated RE584-1. From my research, it seems that due to financial reasons being the most likely case here, Prostrakin dropped the development of RE584-1 in favor of their transdermal, first-of-its-kind, topical androgen. This medication was called Fortesta Testosterone Gel, and it went on to gain millions for Prostrakin during a time where the pharmaceutical company was having some debt issues. In fact, Prostrakin mentions this particular drug in their R&D pipeline under the section of Male HRT, if you check the Wayback Machine link on the archive website. Normal androgen, testosterone, and dihydrotestosterone levels are important for bone and muscle mass, strength, cognition, sexual function, and general sense of well-being in men. It is well known that androgen levels decrease with age. So, with an aging population, androgen replacement therapy is becoming increasingly important. When taken by mouth, androgens are very quickly destroyed by the liver. This issue has been overcome by the introduction of more acceptable dermally applied geals. However, the ideal goal remains a safe and consistently effective oral androgen replacement therapy. Androgen replacement also has potential uses in male contraception, various muscle-wasting diseases, and certain aspects of female sexual dysfunction. Fortunately for Prostrakin, they would eventually get the United States of America's FDA, the Food and Drug Administration's, approval for their topical androgen gel for the treatment of low testosterone in men, also known as hypogonadism. Shortly after, Kiwa Hakokirin, the Japanese pharmaceutical company that I mentioned earlier, would offer to buy out Prostrakin and incorporate it as a subsidiary under its pharmaceutical multinational umbrella as Kiowa Kirin International. For what it's worth, someone on Reddit supposedly contacted a researcher on the clinical trials for RU584-1, and this researcher essentially said the same thing. And we can see that around this time, Prostrakin was having some money issues, as noted by these articles on the screen here. Furthermore, another Reddit user named Burgi made a detailed documentation of Prostrakin's research and development plan. They were able to uncover, in some paywalled articles, that Prostrakin mentions that they did see value in continuing RU5841, also known as PSK3841, along with other drugs in their research pipeline. This included an estradiol patch for women, so a female hormone replacement therapy for women who have low estrogen. However, they simply did not have these drugs as a priority. This is what Prostrakin apparently stated. And Burgi goes on to document how Prostrakin essentially dropped these drugs. RU5841, also known as PSK3841, the estradiol patch for women, and some others that aren't really important for us to consider. So again, Prostrakin didn't have these drugs as a priority, although they saw some value in it. So everyone who says that there's no way if this thing actually worked, they would have brought it to market. That's not particularly the case here. Money is a motivating factor, and some markets are just bigger than hair loss, believe it or not. And if you're a good pharmaceutical company, but at the same time you have limited funds because of your investors, you need to prioritize your money in places that you know you're going to get more success. And for Prostrakin, that was there for Testa treatment for hypogonadism or men who have low testosterone and it served them well well enough to solve their financial troubles and get bought out by a pretty large pharmaceutical company from japan now finally for myself i was able to talk to a researcher through linkedin who was doing clinical trials for prostrakin at the time and they also mentioned that the money was spread thin between two projects that project being that male hormone replacement gel and the topical anti-androgen RU58841, also known as PSK3841. Now, that's my word for what it's worth, so hopefully that means something. I'm not going to dox this particular person that I was talking to, because they told this to me in confidence, so 
that's just not something I'm going to do here. But again, that being said, we don't have the full human clinical trials publicly available on RE5841. So we can't say how much of the hair counts improved by for the humans or if there were any strange side effects. And when you go on the internet and you read some of the posts, there seems to be some strange side effects regarding this particular topical anti-androgen. So let's explore that and see what's going on here. Are you 58841, my experience, after two different symptomatic episodes? What a waste of good are you? It's really crazy to me how some dudes take it for years without any problems, and others are getting heart attack symptoms within days. That's why I tried it again. I was literally thinking last time I ended up being sick after a few days of chest pain, maybe I got COVID. I tried it again and got way worse symptoms this round. I don't get symptoms to any dutasteride, finasteride, low-level laser therapy, minoxidil, or derma rolling. 